The Witch Director, Robert Eggers, is back with a new film called The Lighthouse, uh, which looks very interesting. There's definitely a novelty factor to it, but uh, is it good? Let's discuss. The Lighthouse stars Willem Dafoe, Robert Pattinson, and is directed by Robert Eggers. What's up, guys? It's time to review The Lighthouse. This is a movie that kind of snuck up on me. Over the last couple of weeks, I heard a lot of rumblings about it. And it's definitely one of those movies that grabs your attention because of a few things, really. One, it's an isolated environment type movie. It's a period piece. Uh, and it, it, it only has two characters throughout the entire movie. Uh, two speaking characters really so and also there's a lot of interesting things uh, themes really to discuss with this movie uh, it's it's one of those types of films that you could really break open and dig a little deeper if you wanted to as a matter of fact like I think last week I put out my hidden meanings video this could definitely fit in that category because after I saw this with my wife and by the way, we found one theater in town that was showing it, didn't even know it was showing it, and we just happened to be out, and we saw it, and we're like, oh shit, they're showing the lighthouse. We gotta see this. After we left the movie, though, we were just, we talked the entire way home, like 30 minutes, about all the different things that this, this movie could mean. And I love movies like that, I really do. So this one was really interesting. So first off, quick plot synopsis. This is set in the very late 1800s. You have these two seamen, and uh, they are pretty much watching this lighthouse uh, for for who knows how long. It could be months, uh, but you know they have to man their station. And of course, cabin fever kind of sets in. You can compare this to The Shining a little bit because they're stuck with only each other's company and they are two very different people, uh, not only in uh, mannerisms, but also in age. Now our first character, the older gentleman played by Willem Dafoe, um, I like that these two characters are so different because when I first started watching this, I thought Willem Dafoe was going to be the star power, I guess you could say in this, in terms of acting ability, because I'd say in the first like 20 minutes of the movie, uh, he's kind of the scene stiller. Uh, you know, he, he's the one that really has the, the fat that you're on. He nails the accent. Uh, you can tell that he really studied up on this character. And then you got Robert Pattinson who plays Ephraim, again, from the first 20 minutes, he's really quiet. He, he doesn't really want to be bothered too much. Uh, he's hired by uh, Willem Dafoe's character, Thomas Wake. And, you know, it's it's a relationship that we've seen in movies before. You know, the, the mentor, the older craftsman, not really taking the younger person under his wing, but really just directing him, giving him orders. That's pretty much what Thomas Wake does to Ephraim. But as the movie goes along, Ephraim goes through a lot of emotional issues throughout this movie uh, for different reasons. One is because he's just fed up with uh, Thomas Wake. You know, he he's just a creature of habit. He's constantly like farting. Uh, he's he's grumpy. He's annoying. You know, all these little things just start getting on Ephraim's nerves uh, after a while. And of course, you know that these two are going to come to a head. But then also there's some psychological issues. This is a character that's definitely running from something and you'll notice that as the movie goes along. Early in the movie he sees like this mermaid and he starts getting these like visions of you know having sex with the mermaid and at first at face value you're thinking you know he's just a horny sailor. But then as the layers are peeled back you you can tell that there's a little bit more going on in Ephraim's psyche than we might think. And there's one scene where there's like an exchange, without going into any spoilers, there's like an exchange between uh, Ephraim and Thomas Wake. And it presents some of these uh, pent up issues. Uh, it brings them forward. And then Thomas Wake has to deal with them. Now, from a filmmaking standpoint in this movie, I like novelty movies. I like movies that step outside the norm and try different things. And Robert Eggers is a very hands-on type of director. And by that, I mean every facet of the filmmaking process, he has his hands on, even the acting. He wanted the, the actors to handle their lines in a very specific way. And what's interesting is these two actors, they're different types of actors. Willem Dafoe is like a classically trained rehearsal type of actor, whereas uh, Robert Pattinson is a more spontaneous, hates rehearsal. So... It was perfect to cast these two characters against 
each other because that's really what the characters are. So you have the actors that are very different and you have the characters that are very different. And it just created that tension. You could sense the tension uh, between them outside of the actual story. And I think sometimes that can work and sometimes it doesn't work so well. But in this situation, when you have a director that knows how to handle these two actors, it worked extremely well because I don't want to give Robert Eggers all the credit, but I will say Robert Pattinson pulls out one of the strongest performances I've seen this year. His acting in this movie is nothing short of extraordinary. It really is. And it's interesting too, because he eased into the character. It didn't start out that way. You know, he seemed kind of quiet. I, I was a little, not worried, but I didn't think he was going to wow me like he did by the end of the movie. I mean, he really loses his shit by the end of this movie. And you're just in awe of it. Whereas Willem Dafoe pretty much stayed the course throughout the whole movie uh, in terms of acting. As he should, that's how his character is. Ephraim is just such an interesting character. And Robert Pattinson handled him, I think, to perfection. I mean like Oscar worthy. That's how both these guys really did Oscar worthy performances, but I think Robert Pattinson definitely deserves the Oscar. Now there's also the section in the movie where the seagulls are just constantly annoying the shit out of uh, Ephraim because Ephraim, he's the laborer. He's the guy that's doing all the manual labor, taking care of the maintenance. Whereas uh, Thomas, uh, he's just manning the, the lighthouse and sleeping for most of the day. So Ephraim does all the heavy lifting physically in this movie. But there, there are these seagulls, and, and Wakeman warns him, do not mess with the, uh, the seagulls, don't kill them, don't do, don't do anything. It doesn't really work out that way. Uh, it, because when you have a, a, a character like Ephraim that's com constantly losing his mind throughout the movie, and then you have these seagulls that are constantly messing with him, it makes for an interesting scene. And Wakeman warns him that these seagulls actually are like the souls of um, dead seamen. So that adds a little bit of mystery to the story. I mean, really, there's a lot of mystery in this movie. The way everything's handled, all the way to the light, you know, that, that's cast from the, the top of the lighthouse. There's a lot of symbolism. And I don't want to go into any spoilers. Really, it's not spoilers. A lot of it is just stuff that you could pick up yourself. Uh, and I like movies that are ambiguous like that. This could mean this, or this could mean this. And if I did like a spoiler review, I could really, really go in depth, especially with the character of Ephraim and his journey throughout this movie and what all the crazy imagery uh, means throughout. Now, as far as any cons, this might be a little out there for some people. Uh, some people might say that, you know, when you're watching two people in a room together throughout the whole movie, it's not going to be for everybody. I guess that's just the best way to put it. It was definitely for me, though. I loved this movie. I'm giving it a trap on an island. It is definitely one of the best movies of the year. It's so unique. I love the way it was filmed, all black and white. They used lenses from, like, uh, the turn of the 20th century to give it this authentic, uh, you know, vintage look. And it's just a very unique-looking film. I was kind of getting those, like, Night of the Living Dead vibes just from the, the way the film looked, um, but very effective. So anyway, guys, post your thoughts on The Lighthouse. I'm sure there's a lot of mixed opinions on this movie, which I love that in movies. You know, I love movies that divide audiences. I don't know if this will divide the audiences, but it's definitely not going to be for everybody. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks, where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do free for Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and Drum Dum out.